Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. Today we're looking at part three for the detritus worm live culture, and I have some bad news. It looks like the culture might have some issues. Um, it could be the mistake I made of having a 24-hour light on the tank. It could also be the uh, time that I waited. I might have waited too long to feed them. Or it could be uh, my ultimate mistake of keeping it out here in the swamp shack. Uh, yeah, it's not outdoors, but it's pretty much outdoors. So I might just be out of practice. It's been a while since I tried to raise these worms uh, specifically in uh, large numbers like we used to. So we're going to jump right in, look at the tank, and talk about it. All right, guys, so here is our detritus worm culture. And before we get too heavy into the tank, I wanted to show you the surface. Um, it seems like I have made a mistake. Uh, I was trying a 24-hour light on this tank just to see what would happen. And, uh, of course, it, you know, grew a ton of duckweed. The duckweed layer is so dense in here, it's crazy. I mean, we have so much duckweed. Uh, the tank is literally full of duckweed at this point, uh, which might have blocked oxygen from getting into the water. Uh, I didn't plan this, and I didn't exactly foresee this happening. Another side effect of the 24-hour light, um, plus keeping the tank in my swamp shack, my outbuilding, uh, we have some unexpected visitors. We have a large beetle here. I'm not sure what species, but it is alive. It's sort of just sitting on the cucumber slice. I'm not sure what's up with that. Yeah, he's alive. He's just kind of kind of chilling. I'm not sure if he's eating the duckweed or eating the cucumber or the duckweed. Uh, either way, I, I didn't mean to have large beetles in here, so that might be a problem. We also have a number of small insects, um, which were most likely attracted by the light. And uh, they might be some kind of gnat. I'm sure there's a better explanation for what they are. Uh, but they're uh, on the surface level as well. And uh, they're kind of interesting. But I don't generally play with things that fly. <laughs> I'm not too big on flying insects, especially not in my aquariums. So maybe you guys can help me get a better ID on these small creatures here, these small insects. I'm not sure what they are. Uh, but they're in here as well. <laughs> and uh, that was not expected. Um, if I try to build another detritus worm culture, I'm going to have to bring it indoors. Uh, just to prevent these kinds of things from happening. And I'll have to run it without a light at all. And uh, to cut down the duckweed growth. I never thought that too much duckweed would be a problem. Uh, but apparently it has uh, caused some uh, adverse side effects for the aquarium. Uh, luckily our snails are doing quite well. You can see a few of them there. Slowly munching on the duckweed. Which is awesome. Very happy to see them. They're doing well. They should be breeding. They should be some egg sacs here and there. And uh, that's a good thing. I'm sorry if the video is a little shaky. I'm operating without my uh, equipment right now just to show you the surface of the tank. Oh, and I should mention that this is a uh, Lemna Minor duckweed and water meal. There's also water meal in here. That's the very, very small duckweed pieces that you see. Uh, there are a number of different species of duckweed, and uh, you know this is uh, displaying a few of them. I would like to acquire some giant duckweed one day, uh, but uh, that's uh, you know a future project. Now here's a look at the tank as it sits. It's been about uh, what a week, maybe two, since setup, and I expected to have quite a bit more activity in here. Uh, but it looks like the duckweed has basically cut off all oxygen from transferring into the water. So we have what is essentially a dead zone. Um, our worms, they don't have the uh, the ability, I guess. They don't have the ability to come up and acquire oxygen from the surface like the snails do. So the snails are ultimately unaffected. Uh, they can survive eutrophic conditions. But the worms, um, their numbers seem to have been diminished a great deal. I will, of course, uh, remove that beetle and uh, make some adjustments to the tank. Maybe we can repopulate it with detritus worms. <laughs> uh, but I'm very happy that we grew so much duckweed. You can see how thick the layer is there. It's, it's dense, and that's pretty cool. I will, of course, uh, have to fish out that uh, beetle and put him outside. 
Uh, but I'm very happy with the density of the duckweed layer. Uh, not intended, but uh, it works out nice. You know, we can grow a lot of duckweed. <laughs> so we have that going for us. Uh, looking closely, you can see the uh, roots on the duckweed are quite long. And that indicates that it's not getting uh, much uh, nutrients out of the water here. Uh, which was not what I expected. Um, in my experience, the length of the duckweed roots can kind of indicate the amount of nutrients in the water, how fertile the water is. And I used some very fertile water to set this up, uh, but I assume that the massive amount of duckweed simply, uh, you know, it's competing with itself to uh, acquire nutrients and grow. So it's, it's sinking very long roots into the water, and uh, that's okay, you know. Uh, but I, I wasn't trying to grow so much duckweed in here. <laughs> so it looks like the 24-hour light combined with the agitation of the snails and apparently the giant beetle has caused uh, some issues with the uh, plan for the aquarium. You may hear some birds chirping and some things in the background. Uh, that's just part of my, uh, <laughs> my world out here. You'll have to forgive me. Also, our beetle's on the move. Yeah, so he's alive and well, and I don't know if he's eating the cucumber or what exactly is going on here, but uh, yeah, at least we didn't kill him. So he didn't drown or anything, so that's good. Uh, but let's take a closer look. This is a piece of cucumber floating in the water, and uh, yeah, we have quite a bit of snail action. And there are some paramecia, of course. Some uh, copepods over there on the side. adjust our lighting slightly. I'm trying to make the videos a bit brighter because I noticed that some of my old videos were pretty dark. Uh, but normally the worms would have consumed this entire piece of cucumber with the help of the snails and the other creatures. And that hasn't happened. So that shows me that the, uh, the worm population is not what I expected it to be at this point. And I believe that's because of the uh, eutrophic conditions, the, the no oxygen conditions in the lower portions of the aquarium. Uh, but the snails are pretty active and pretty happy, so we built a decent wider snail aquarium, if nothing else. And um, we have some planaria and some other creatures in here as well. Quite a bit of our uh, paramecium. Um, that's one thing. I can easily raise paramecium. They're, they're very, very easy to work with. And uh, they don't seem to mind pretty much any conditions as long as there's water and food. But I had hoped to see more of our detritus worms in this aquarium. Uh, I am somewhat disappointed that uh, their numbers did not skyrocket as intended. Uh, now, zooming in closely, uh, we might have a few in here. It's hard to tell among the paramecium movement. Uh, the worms are uh, about three times the size of the paramecium, though. So if they're, they're in here, we'll see them. Now, my original uh, culture from the uh, original video series about them uh, the detritus worms were kept indoors without a light, simply running off sunlight in a window. So we may have to return to that setup and uh, see if we can adjust the tank a little bit. Maybe reseed them from other cultures that we have, uh, particularly uh, my aquariums. There are quite a few of them uh, where we have the detritus worms. Uh, but ultimately, uh, yeah, it seems like they were driven out in this tank. They were uh, not successful. All right, so switching over to my other macro lens, we have more magnification. We can see things a little bit better. And uh, it seems like the color's been adjusted as well, which is useful. Uh, but our, our paramecium are very active, and they're, they're doing pretty good in here. Uh, so there's that. You know, we do have a successful paramecium aquarium. Uh, but I can do that in almost any tank, so that's not a very big thing for me. Uh, and I'm not too thrilled about just seeing them in here like this. Uh, I mean, I love them, you know, of course, all my little pets. Uh, but we wanted detritus worms, and uh, that's what I was hoping for. There's a really big planaria, just coming by a planarian. See if we can't change the focus to capture him, or it, rather. And then those are flatworms. Uh, it's a type of flatworm. They're very interesting creatures. It turns out you can actually chop up a paramecium, and it will just regrow into several more. Um, they're very tough and very interesting in their own right. 
And, uh, you know, they're cool too. I like all our worms, but mainly we wanted our detritus worms in this tank. Paramecium, very easy to raise. And uh, if you want to know anything about them, you know, I can easily do that. Uh, but we're still looking for our detritus worms. I'd hope to see at least a few of them in here. Uh, now, of course, our paramecium are down here, so apparently uh, it's not entirely devoid of oxygen. We have thousands of paramecium just, just cruising all through the lower portions of the aquarium. And our Nutella has survived. It has uh, taken root in here, so to say. Uh, but I'm still looking for our beloved detritus worms. Uh, whoa, there's some outgassing from the substrate. Just a bubble kind of floating by there. Uh, but... You know, amongst all this activity, I'm not seeing our worms. So, uh, that's pretty disappointing. My whole goal with this video series was to show you guys some detritus worms. Uh, but that being said, uh, you know, don't be too discouraged. And things can change. I'm sure there's at least a few of them left alive in here. Most likely among the duckweed layer. Uh, but, you know, uh, down here at the bottom, we do have some activity. So, it's not entirely uh, lost. And our, our beetle is uh, currently making his great escape from the aquarium. So let's help him out. I'm back up near the surface, and we have a lot of activity up here. Uh, so not all uh, hope is lost. <laughs> I believe this tank can be uh, repaired. We can, once again, seed our detritus worms into this uh, culture here. Uh, but we're going to have to pull out some of this massive duckweed mess that we've created and I'll have to bring the tank indoors and run it uh, like we used to. Uh, no 24-hour light, nothing like that. Uh, but we have the problem of having just too many tanks in the house right now. <laughs> I was building a new aquarium every week and, you know, acquiring jars left and right. And I've just simply run out of shelf space in my windows. So I'm going to have to uh, modify some things. And we might have to move some tanks around. Uh, but I believe that we can, once again, return this to be a detritus worm paradise. So, uh, you know, we do have a healthy bladder snail population, which is a good sign. And they go hand in hand with the detritus worms, in my experience. Uh, you know, they, I don't know, one way or another, they seem to work together. And the worms will even consume the worms occasionally. Oh, excuse me, the snails will even consume the worms occasionally. Uh, which I have yet to catch on video, which is something I'm hoping to get soon. Uh, but we have some nice bladder snails in here, and that's a good sign. Uh, we might have to uh, renegotiate our setup a bit, but we should be able to return this to a detritus worm culture. But if you're watching these videos, you're most likely uh, just getting started with raising your own detritus worms. I also call them DT worms occasionally, just for a short hand. Uh, but if you're starting out yourself, you're not going to succeed every time. So this might work out for the best, just to show you, you know, what can happen. And, you know, what things uh, to expect. You know, you're not going to succeed with every project. And that's uh, that's very apparent. Um, sometimes you'll build a tank with the ultimate goal of growing one or two things, and other things will happen. And that's part of the fun, you know, is learning and uh, experiencing things, experimenting. Our, uh, our duckweed is everywhere, so if nothing else, you know, we've succeeded in some parts of the tank, and it might even turn out for the best as things settle, as more bacteria spreads across everything in the aquarium, our uh, detritus worms might be able to make a better uh, foothold, you know, next time we add them to the tank. I didn't want to just, like, inject them in here off screen and not show you guys, you know, I wanted to talk about it and to, uh, really, you know, display every aspect of this live culture with you. I'm not going to talk about other channels on YouTube, uh, but it's just too easy for them to just throw a bunch of stuff into a tank and be like, oh, look at my ecosphere and all these creatures. And yeah, that's nice. Let me see that tank in six months. You know, let me see all the plants and stuff that's still in there. Let me see all the, uh, the breeding populations you established. And usually that doesn't happen. So I don't want to be like that. You know, I want to show you guys every aspect of the tank. And, uh, yeah, I want to talk about it a little bit and walk through it with you. 
I want it to be like you're here with me, you know, helping me build this aquarium. Uh, so one thing I did do in the previous uh, detritus worm cultures, uh, I would pin the uh, cucumber down in the very bottom of the aquarium uh, to encourage the creatures to come down here and feed. And that might help us a little bit to attract any worms and maybe get them in here and uh, see what happens. Uh, I'm worried that there might be some kind of beetle larva or something in here as well that uh, may uh, feed on the worms, <laughs> which could be uh, unexpected, but likely. Uh, so for now, I'm going to pin this down here like we have it, and I'm going to hope that they kill, or that they kill and consume. That I'm going to hope that they consume all of the cucumber slice here, and we have some planaria and stuff in here. Uh, but I'm going to hope that that might encourage, there's another massive planarian coming down this way. Uh, but I'm going to pin that down there at the bottom and hope that, you know, maybe that might change some things. I'm going to pull some duckweed out as well and use it to seed one of my other projects it's to allow oxygen to transfer into the water. I'm going to have to put it in a windowsill and uh, do, do away with the 24-hour light. Uh, and if that doesn't work, then in part three, or part four rather, this is part three, uh, but if that doesn't work, then in part four, we're going to have to uh, reseed it. We're going to have to add more detritus worms and try to get the culture started again. Uh, which might be better, uh, you know, as things mature and things settle and grow. That might help us out. So there's a look at our beautiful duckweed layer here. I hate to disturb it, but uh, at this point, like, I could use this duckweed for other projects. So that's fine. Uh, it's very beautiful and very green and uh, very nice. So if nothing else, we can pull some duckweed out, use that to start another jar, another project. And I have quite a few ponds outside that could, you know, do with the influx of new duckweed. So that's great. Uh, but I need to pull some out and try to get some more oxygen down there. I will not run any kind of bubbler or anything like that as it would just disturb the tank a great deal. And uh, that's not natural. Uh, now, I didn't show all of the creatures in here. There are, of course, water mites and all sorts of small creatures that live among the duckweed. Uh, but that's not our main feature. We're looking for our detritus worms, and honestly, I didn't see any. So, we're going to have to rework this tank. There's the, uh, that's the spot where the cucumber was. And I did take the uh, beetle out of here. So, anyway, guys, a little bit disappointed. We still have a nice aquarium to look at but it needs to be a functional detritus worm culture for me to accomplish my goals. So I'm going to fix it up in our next part. Uh, we're going to come back in a few days, maybe a week, and see if our changes have made any impact on the tank. Once again, I'm just going to pull some duckweed out, and I'll be pitting the uh, cucumber slices down in the bottom of the tank from now on to see if that helps with the worms. And uh, I'm going to cut to the outro. Thanks for watching, guys. I feel like I let you down a little bit. Uh, but don't be afraid, you know, if this happens to you, there's always next time. I'm going to rework this tank. We're going to see if we can't make our worms come back. And if nothing else, we're going to add them again, and we're going to make it work. Well, all right, guys, it's getting kind of dark out here. Um, that was part three for the detritus worm live culture. Uh, it's not perfect. Some things have happened. It's still a pretty interesting tank, though. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll keep it, and we'll work on another one soon. Uh, my name is Terry. This is Bucket Ponds, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Please like and subscribe. I try to get a weekly video out. Uh, sometimes I mess up. I miss my mark. Other times I upload two videos a week. So, you know, there's constant content coming out. Uh, but I'll see you next time. We'll set up more tanks in the future. And we will have these worms in vast numbers just like we used to. So I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.